everybody, my name is Sarah and I'm one of the nutritionists here at the Toronto Zoo. Today we're going to talk about digestion. Right now we're in, in the Indomalaya Pavilion in front of the Bolin's Python exhibit and we're going to watch a feed. So we're going to watch Prince Theodore um, have his uh, weekly meal. Uh, now um, the Bolin's Python is an ambush predator. So they're used to waiting around for long periods of time for um, a prey to scurry over. Um, pythons are carnivores and carnivores have very simple digestive tracts. It's really just a long simple tube. They do not have a highly specialized um, intestines like some of the other animals that we're going to see today. So you can see that um, he's flicking his tongue out and that pronged tongue is actually looking for um, odor particles. And the tongue is actually uh, speaking to the Jacobson's organ, which basically allows the snake to smell with its tongue. And so you can see right now uh, Prince Theo um, starting to open up his jaw. You could see that that rat was a lot larger than his head. Uh, so pythons are actually able to open up their jaw 150 degrees. Humans can only open their jaw about 45 degrees. So that really helps these pythons to capture prey that's much larger than them. You might also be able to see how he's able to move his jaw and sort of walk it along our, the rat that he's eating. And so pythons, they don't have a chin like humans have. Our chin has a big bone. Their chin is, not, is connected by muscle and they're actually able to move each lower jaw independently and literally walk their mouth down the rat. And it can take quite a bit of time for a python to uh, finish their meal, especially in the wild if they catch something as large as a rabbit. You might wonder, wow, they have their mouths full of food. How are they able to breathe? Well, they have special adaptations and they can actually move their trachea, which is what they use to breathe, uh, so that they can hold this huge prey item in their mouth um, and still be able to have that oxygen exchange. And you can see he's slowly able to get that rat um, in. So once that the rat is completely swallowed, it passes through the esophagus. Um, but first you can see that he has to get that, still struggling to get the rat in. Pythons have teeth that are pointed backwards and they act like hooks and they help to get the rat further and further down into the snake's esophagus and eventually um, the rat passes from the esophagus into their stomach. Snakes have really incredible uh, stomachs that produce extremely acidic acid um, and it allows them to uh, consume this whole prey without chewing. Their stomachs can actually drop um, the pH down to about one, which is extremely low and very acidic. This helps to actually dissolve the whole animal. So that includes, it uh, helps to dissolve the bones, um, the skin, the hair, uh, and even that tail. It can take up to one week for a snake to fully digest a meal of this size. So you can imagine it's a little slow for these guys once they've captured their prey, which is why they need to capture prey that's much larger than their face. So one easy way to tell what um, animals might eat is by looking at its teeth. And again, these python have teeth that are pointed backwards to help them get their food down into their mouth because they don't have any hands and they don't chew their food. Wasn't that so cool? We're off now to gorillas to talk about monogastric digestion. All right, guys, we're here in the Africa Pavilion in front of the gorilla habitat, and this is our gorilla family. So as you can see, there's lots of food scattered about. 
um, in their habitat. So gorillas in the wild, they live in a salad bowl. They have thousands of plants to choose from. And they choose a specific, um, around 100 to 200 different plants that they forage from in the wild. Here at the Toronto Zoo, we provide them with over 40 different plants to forage. And you can see down here, there's a big banana leaf uh, for them to munch on. And at, in the background, we have some apple silage. So here at the Toronto Zoo, we try to feed them lots and lots of wild type foods. And why is that? Well, gorillas, we want them to use their digestive system the way that they would in the wild. And gorillas are actually really similar to humans. So you can see, um, they're trying to get some food out of the puzzle feeder. And once that puzzle feeder gets into their mouths, they're gonna start chewing on that food. And gorillas have 32 teeth just like us humans. Their molars is what really help them to grind and get their food down into tiny pieces. So once they consume that food, it goes down into, through their esophagus and into their stomach, where we can first start having our chemical digestion work away in the stomach with all those gastric juices. After that, the food passes down into their intestines. And what you can see here, sometimes gorillas, you might think that they look fat, but that's not fat down here. That's a huge fermentation tank. That's their large intestines. And so the gorillas are designed to eat really fibrous foods. You can see this banana leaf has these huge long fibers which are really hard to digest. Once those fibers get down into the colon, the colon has filled with billions of microbes, specialized bacteria that actually help to digest the fiber for the gorillas. The bacteria release energy into the colon, which these guys can start to absorb. And so the bacteria is really, really helpful because it's, it can actually eat away at things that the gorillas can't and provide the gorillas with energy. So gorillas are very, very similar to humans. Um, they, you know, they can see, they ingest and they also egest. And so um, they sometimes have gas buildup and our, our keepers sometimes say that sometimes they might have some really stinky gas. Sometimes the, the foods that give them the worst gas are onions and garlic. And again, these guys, um, they're so much like humans, um, but what's really interesting is that they actually hold on to their food longer. Food stays in their body about 80 hours. In humans, it can be about 24 to 40 hours. And again, that's because they're eating that really high fiber food. Eventually, when the food comes out the other end, you'll see that it actually looks kind of like human poop, except for it can be a little bit drier and you can see that there's lots of fiber in there. These guys are a, have a single stomach and therefore they're called monogastrics. Um, and that means that they have one stomach. They're also known as hindgut fermenters and that's because the fermentation and all of those microbes, all that happens behind the stomach. So thanks for joining us here at the Gorillas. We're gonna head on over to giraffes to learn about rumination digestion. Hey everybody, so we're here at giraffes and we're going to talk about giraffe digestion. Uh, they have really unique digestive strategy. Um, they're actually ruminants. And so what that means is that they have a four chambered stomach, which is just like a cow. So you guys can really, when you look at a giraffe, you can imagine a cow on stilts. So giraffe actually have the same number of teeth as humans. They have 32 teeth, but the majority of their teeth are actually at the back of their mouth. So giraffe in the wild, their natural diet is primarily acacia trees. And so they're eating the, the leaves and the twigs and the bark of these trees. Their diet in the wild is really, really fibrous. So their digestive strategy is actually to keep chewing, regurgitating, swallowing, and then regurgitating, chewing, swallowing again and again. That's called rumination. You'll see that once they swallow and they're in a relaxed state, um, you'll actually see the food pass all the way down into their stomach and shoot all the way back up to be chewed again. And they'll do that process over and over until they're able to just macerate those leaves, that really fibrous material, to as small as they can. The rumen is filled with billions of microbes. Those microbes actually help to break down cellulose, which is that really, really tough fiber part of a leaf. What's really cool is that giraffe actually get the majority of their protein from the microbes, not from the protein in their diet. 
So once those microbes have worked, they're working away in the rumen, they pass down into one of the other chambers of the stomach, which is much more acidic, that actually kills the bacteria, and the bacteria pass through into their intestines, where that protein is actually absorbed by the giraffe. So really, the microbes get first dibs on all of the protein and carbohydrates that they're eating. So after the uh, giraffe have processed their food and have absorbed all their nutrients in their intestines, they have to eliminate. And they actually have pellets that look a lot like deer pellets. So they're, they're little balls. But giraffe feces is kind of unique. Um, if you were to look up close at a giraffe feces, it's a ball with two kind of flat, one flat side, and a little indentation. And the reason that the feces has a little indentation is because it has to drop six feet onto the ground. So really, you can easily tell giraffe poop from other ruminants poop because of that flat surface on one side. Thanks so much for joining us today, guys. We learned a lot about Boleyn's python digestion, western lowland gorilla digestion, and now Maasai giraffe digestion. I had, hope you guys had just as much fun as I did, and we really hope to see you at the zoo sometime soon.